is a 22 Canadian dollar slash under $20 US power supply worth it? No. No, it isn't. Hey again, guys, and welcome back. On my last mailbag, I received, um, or I bought, I should say, this uh, Cool Max power supply. Now, this thing was 23 bucks Canadian, so that's under $20 American. Is this any friggin' good? Well, we're going to find out today, hopefully. So, first and foremost, um, this breakout board, I actually upgraded the binding posts because I was told the binding posts, these one here, are junk. So I upgraded them all to these. Um, I didn't install this in a permanent fashion because I might want to reuse these binding posts for other things. I'm running super low on them and they're actually quite expensive around these days because of probably COVID um, from eBay. So I'll be using this. But now the problem is, when I pull current from this thing, how do I know if it's actually this module dropping voltage or if it's this power supply? Well, I have the specs here for an ATX power supply, so the voltage ranges that are acceptable. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull current from this device, but we're going to test from somewhere else. Um, the way I'm going to do that is all these yellow wires here, and all these red wires and all these black wires, um, they're all linked together. So the black would be negative. The um, red, I believe, is 5 volts. And the orange over here, these guys, these are 3.3 volts and the blacks are all ground. So at least for the um, 5 and 12 volts, I want to pull connectors, pull pins out of this these connectors and actually take a measurement from these wires. And no current should be coming through these wires aside from, I don't know, the, the um, micro, you know, half a microamp going through the multimeter. So it should give us um, an idea of what's going on in here. And we'll also check voltage here to see if we're dropping voltage here. Now, how are we going to pull current? Well, I just built this device here. This is a two 50 watt, three ohm resistors in parallel. And so I should be able to get roughly 1.5 uh, ohms of resistance. So if you divide 12 by 1.5, that should give us the current. Actually, we'll take the actual measurements divided by 1.5 and they'll give us the actual current pulling. And basically, if uh, this is, is too much current for this module, this needs to go back because I want this thing to power more than just a few things, right? So this is, uh, if you think about uh, 2 ohms should give us 6 amps of current, um, 1.5 ohms should give us like 8 amps of current. If this here that, that you know, it specifies... Uh, 25 amps are available from the 12 volt rail and that's a single rail if we can't pull um, you know six amps without drawing this thing down too much this thing's not really any good for me so let me get you a little bit closer and I will pull some uh, connections out of here so we can grab with our multimeter and then we can start our testing I'm going to do my best to try to keep you in shot here but um, this little uh, floppy drive connector should be the easiest thing to pull apart. So usually you push the wire in, then you push down on a little tab here, and then you pull the wire out while holding down that tab. Now, it is easy to kind of stab yourself. You've got to be careful. So there we go. So that little tab is now out. Let's grab one of these black ones for a ground. There we go, that's two. And grab the red for our five volts. We'll have to deal with something else with our uh, for our 3.3 .3 because there are no 3.3 .3 connections available on these little auxiliary connectors. Oh, this one's being stubborn. 
Now I could open up this power supply and um, uh, take the wires from inside, but if this is no good, I need to send back. And honestly, it'll still be a usable power supply, so I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it. And here is our setup. So I've got the binding posts here, which I'm going to use this ANEG meter. And I'm going to grab the 12 volt rail because honestly, that's the one that is the most important to me. I'll be running my LEDs from the 12 volt rail and I want to run my uh, power supply, my benchtop power supply from the 12 volt rail. So that's in. I'll also put this load. So again, this should pull roughly eight amps of current. Whether or not I can pull that from this module is a different story though. I will certainly give it a shot. Uh, and if it doesn't work, then really this power supply is not for me. Then I need my 12 volts here. This will be our secondary sensing to see if um, this board here is dropping that voltage. There we go. So that is that. I don't want this to be able to short. So that's good. Set this to DC volts. Set this to automatic ranging volts. And turn this on. Now, don't forget, we need to stay above 11.4 and below 12.6 on any one of these meters. Can you see everything? Yes, you can. All right, let's see if it works. So we got 11.98 uh, straight from the rails of the power supply, and we have 11.4342 um, straight from this module with the upgraded um, uh, binding posts. So that's not bad, actually. Are these things getting warm? Yep, they're getting quite warm. That's why I put my mat down. So that's actually not too bad. This thing may actually serve its purpose because this is really um, like around 8 amps of current. So that's pretty neat. Let's give it a few minutes and see what happens. I'm also going to, um, into this wire here, it's actually being fed by only a few yellow wires. And I'm not sure if those are going to get hot from pulling all that current. My resistors are certainly getting pretty hot. Yeah, they, they're getting hot. All right, I'm going to have to cut the test because my resistors can't handle the heat. So there we go. I'm going to unplug this. Yeah, something definitely smells hot. Just checking my... Yeah, my connectors are ice cold. The wires get hotter and hotter as they get closer to the resistors. So that was a successful test. Now I can apply the same test on the 5 volt rail. Uh, we were all within specs here. Um, however, I need to give this a few minutes to cool down. So it's been nearly 15 minutes and um, these are still warm, but they're no longer hot. So we can move on to the 5 volt uh, test. So I've moved my crocodile clips over here. So I'm on the 5 volt rail. I've also moved everything over to these 5 volt binding posts. But the only thing is now our 1.5 ohms um, won't pull actually that much current. So I need to put another resistor in parallel. And this is a 1 ohm resistor. And because we have a 3 ohm, a 3 ohm, and a 1 ohm resistor, the equivalent resistance is roughly 0.6 ohms. Should give us 8.33-ish uh, um, amps of current draw. Uh, this module should be able to give us, on the 5 volt rail, 21 amps. So this should be no problem again. So we're going to give this a shot. Um, for the calculating the resistance in circuit, uh, that's another tutorial. So if you want to look it up, you can easily, uh, you know, hit up the Googleizer and uh, look it up. But um, in my circuit basics series, which is I promise is coming soon, I need to build a couple implements um, that will be included. But for now, 
just uh, just look up the resistance. I'm going to turn this on. It is on. I'm going to turn it on over here, and we're looking for a minimum of 4.75 volts, a maximum of 5.25 on this one here because this is the rail itself. So here we go. All right, so we're actually below spec here, 4.7 on our module, but uh, the rail is actually still okay at uh, 5.131 um, volts. So that's warm, but again, not as much current is being pulled now, or not as much uh, heat is being created in here uh, because we have three resistors to divide that eight, um, eight amps through. And... Also, we've got a lot less voltage and power, or the heat energy that's in there, is um, voltage times current. So uh, five, 5 volts times the 8 amps, that gives you your total um, wattage. And we're also dividing it amongst three resistors this time. Uh, the 1 ohm is getting a little bit toasty, but not too hot. So that's actually acceptable. I'm just um, I'm just seeing there's a fairly large voltage drop happening probably in this board here. So if you look, we're our rail is at 5.127, and our uh, board is providing 4.676. So at some point, let's just say it's dropping 0.4 of a volt, and um, so uh, eight amp. We'll just round that up to half a volt for. Um, sanity's sake. So at 8 amps and half a volt, so we're actually dropping 4 watts of power somewhere. Yeah, this fuse is actually getting really hot. So yeah, I'm not sure if I can actually use this to power my entire work area like I was intending to. I may actually be better off with a standalone switching power supply with uh, screw terminals on it that I can use directly. But uh, yeah, so this thing is getting pretty toasty. Let me turn this off and then we can do the 3.3 volt tests. Another 15 minutes has gone by. And so now I've reconfigured everything to work on 3.3 volts. And I've also added another one ohm resistor. So we have three ohm, three ohm, one ohm, and a one ohm in parallel gives us an equivalent resistance of 0.38 ohms, which gives us a current at 3.3 volts of roughly 8.6, 8.7 amps. I've also had to go and probe back here. Uh, this is a wire that doesn't seem to be connected on this PCB, so that should be just fine for our purposes. Let's give it a shot. Okay, uh, this is not good. It is actually, the rail is suffering a little bit at 2.7. The 3.3 volt uh, shouldn't be lower than 3.1. So yeah, the rail has been drawn down and the um, actual voltage from our device here has been drawn down. And the 3.3 volt rail should be good for uh, 22 amps. So that's actually well below spec. So this power supply here, uh, if your motherboard was a high spec motherboard, this would actually fail. Um, it could cause random dropouts in um, like your computer would just shut off by itself under high loads, stuff like that. So that's actually not good. And the more I work with this uh, power supply, the more I realize these wires are absolutely tiny. Like this can't be more than it's got to be like 22 gauge wire. So that's not very good. So I think that this will conclude this test. And I think that the verdict is, I'm going to return this. Um, the answer is a 22 Canadian dollar slash under $20 US power supply worth it? No, no, it isn't. And I think for my purposes, I'd rather have a switching power supply that does 12 volts only and has screw terminals so I can extract as much current as possible out of that thing. Because even at uh, less than half, about a, even less than a third of the rated current of these rails, um, they were kind of fluctuating all over the place. So yeah, this thing is going back to Amazon and I want to thank you all for watching.